Have you been noticing your lawn is not greening up and staying green for an extended period? Well, that may be because your pH is off and we have a solution to help you with that. Hello, my name is Jim Conley. I'm with Weston Nurseries out of Chelmsford. We've been receiving a lot of inquiries about why lime, what does lime do, what is pH? So I figured I'd show you a little demonstration to explain that and also explain why we want to put lime in the soil to help our plants grow. So the pH is a scale that starts at zero and it goes to 14. So seven is in the middle. And most of your plants in New England that are uh, rhododendrons and azaleas and blueberries and things like that, like an acid soil. So they would want a pH like around five or maybe four. Most of your shrubs and trees really want a neutral pH uh, that are not natural. Um, so like six or seven. And then there are a few outliers like lilacs that really like a pH of seven or higher. So they'll perform better in that type of thing. There are three ways that your soil pH can go down and become more acidic. The first way is acid rain. So we get rain events that have acidity in it. The second way is every time you use a fertilizer, the compounds in the fertilizer, whether it's an organic fertilizer or a synthetic fertilizer, have some acidity in their manufacturing process. So that will add more acidity to the soil. And the third way is when you have pines or oaks, that typically they have a lot of acidity in their needles and in their leaves. So when they fall down onto the ground in the fall and then the rain goes through them like you would percolate through a coffee, um, it's gonna create more of acidity into the soil uh, beds or lawns area in your yard. What we wanna do is look at how do you first determine what your pH is in your soil and then once you know your pH, what is the corrective action? What happens is the fertilizer you apply to the lawn isn't allowed to be picked up by the roots of the plant. And imagine that the roots of the grass are looking for all these different nutrients in the soil. And there's an invisible wall, which is that pH, that buffer is off. And that wall is preventing those roots from going into and on the other side of it to pick up the fertilizer, the food, if you will, that the plant needs. When you have a pH test done, that's gonna give you the information to make decisions. So you have a few options on how you can do that. We sell a smaller pH testing kit. This one has 10 opportunities, so you can test one section of your yard or test up to 10 sections of your yard. It's also recommended use distilled water so that the pH of the soil won't be affected by the tap water. There's also a probe that's available like this and you can stick it into the ground and it will define the pH. If you'd like, here in Chelmsford, we actually have a, a, a more expensive, more accurate pH testing uh, tool. Um, this has a, a meter on it so when we stick this in the, the soil, uh, it will tell us what the pH is more accurately. So I took some well water, which is what we have here, and I stuck the probe in here. And right now, um, when I press the button, look what happens to the pH of this water. Whoa, it just went really acidic. Well, the well water has a lot of iron, and iron is going to be a more acidic element, so that brings down the pH. And the best way to define how many samples and how many tests you want to do is to kind of break your yard down section by section. So if your house is in the middle and your backyard is one area, your side area is another area, and your front yard is a third area, you would do three separate tests. So I have two different soil samples here that um, I grabbed from our property here. So here's one of the samples right now. I stuck the probe in and then voila, that's telling us that the pH is close to seven. So this is a good soil I really don't need to do anything. I could leave it alone. I may not want to even think about applying lime or any other elements to the ground because it looks good. But I want to talk about that in a few minutes. The second section, I'm going to stick the probe in. And let's, let's come on over here, Noah. And that, that went down a bit, OK? OK, so depending upon where I'm at. So that's a little less than seven, OK? So it can randomly be, you know, one area of the yard be a little higher, one area of the yard be a little lower. And if you notice, the soil color is totally different, but yet the pH is lower with the darker, richer looking soil. And that's probably because this has got more organic matter in it, which is a darker color. Doesn't mean that the soil is any healthier or less healthier or more healthier, but it does mean that the soil texture and the, and the color doesn't always tell you what the pH is. Now this side of the yard, which had a lower pH, 
Let's say it came up five for this example. I'm going to apply one application to Lime, and I'll probably do one application now in the spring and another application in late summer. And then maybe next year do a soil test, see where I'm at. Hopefully I'm close to seven, and if I'm close to seven, just do that once a year annual application. Now let's talk about different forms of correcting the pH of the soil. If your soil pH is too high, it's at six or seven, and you want to fertilize those plants like the blueberries, the rhododendrons, your hydrangeas that you want to have a bluer flower, you want to use a soil acidifier. So that would be something like the Espoma soil acidifier. And what that does is over time, it will start to acidify the soil. It's, it's not like you put it down today and tomorrow the pH just all of a sudden went down. These are all minerals that take time and break down and become part of the, the soil structure over a period of time. Now let's say we want to raise the pH. How do we do that? Well, there's two families of lime. There's calcitic lime and then there's dolomitic lime, which is um, both of them have magnesium. Magnesium is one of the building blocks for plants. However, the calcitic lime becomes more readily available to the plant sometimes within a month's period. Now, we have Magical, which is that calcitic lime. And that is a product where it is, again, almost to that pelletized product where it's encapsulated, so it's easy to use your spreader. But after you spread it, within 30 days, you'll start to see the results. Calcium, which is in a lot of the lime products do, is helps with the integrity of the stems. You want to use lime a lot of times, which is in your, um, for your tomatoes, to give them uh, the ability not to get blossom end rot. So lime is not just for your lawn, it's for all your plants. If you have shrubs and trees that are not performing, by adding a little lime, that's going to help the whole planting bed. So these are different ways that you can help the pH get adjusted up or down so that that way, once that pH is in line, the nutrients will be more available to the plant. So your Magical is that calcitic lime I mentioned that does work to lower the pH and help your lawn be more successful. Another product that can help in combination with the lime is the Love Your Soil. And what that is comprised of, of is calcium, sulfur, and iron. So the calcium, which is already in the lime, is gonna just give you a little bit more of an added boost of getting that calcium into the ground. Um, the sulfur and the iron in combination with that does a lot more to help the health of the soil. So what you see is a picture on the bag that kind of tells the story. When you have a heavy soil that's not really well draining or if the soil doesn't have the ability for a root system to grow because it's in a position where um, there's not good drainage or just compaction, you apply this product and what it does over time is loosen the soil to create more air and then your root system of your lawn will develop much better. And when you have a healthier lawn, or, sorry, a healthier root, you'll have a healthier lawn. Um, the other thing that the Love Your Soil does is it takes out salinity out of the soil. So if you have a female dog that urinates, there's a lot of salt in that, or if you have road salt, and the salt just kind of stays in the soil. It doesn't really leach out. When you apply this to that area, it helps to free it up and move it deeper into the ground. So this product is something that you could use in combination with the Magical so that you can add some lime and help some health to the soil through the opening up process. So what Jonathan Green has done is actually combine the two together in this black bag, okay? So this is called Magical Plus. And this has like half of this and half of this, let's say, for example, in this bag. So going back to the pH, if your pH is at four or five, I wouldn't put this on. Yes, you're gonna get some adjustment, but you, your lawn, your soil is in crises. You wanna put down the Magical straight so that you get that higher concentration of, of the lime working. Once the, the lawn is adjusted, and like we had that soil sample that was at seven, this would probably be the easiest way to do it because you've got the combination of the both. You put it down once, you don't have to worry about it any time of the year, same time if you want to fertilize, water it in, and that's going to give you a corrective balance with the pH, open up that soil so you don't have you know, that heaviness that the soil has and get a better root system in the process. So this is Jim Conley from Western Nurseries of Chelmsford. Thanks for listening to this video. And if you want to subscribe, there's more videos that you can learn from by clicking down below. And we appreciate you sending your comments as well. Um, I'm here to answer any of those questions you might have about your lawn or anything else. 
Have a great day. Till next time.